Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on the We Thrive podcast. My name is Casey Clark, and I am your host today, as well as the founder and chief growth officer of C. Clark Consulting. And I'm so excited to be sharing stories from entrepreneurs from around the world about how they're creating an impactful legacy. And today, I have the pleasure of interviewing my good buddy and love bug, Don Quicksell Hipsley. So thank you so much for joining us today, Don. It's my pleasure. Thank you. You are very welcome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am uh, the owner and operator of DQH Services. We're located in Walkersville, Maryland. And um, I live here with my husband of 15 years tomorrow and our two sons, uh, Everett and Ellis. And we've been in, we moved to the Frederick area um, in 2005 um, from Montgomery County. And uh, we like the the slower paced, although it's not staying that way, we liked the slower pace of what Frederick County has to offer. Um, and we decided to call it home. So um, a little bit of background about me, my, my career background has always been in property and casualty insurance. Um, and I just needed a change. So I figured what a great what a great place to be to start a business and give me the opportunity to stay at home um, with my children as they age and get into the high school years where, in my opinion, it's so important to have somebody at home, you know, taking care of them and, and watching um, and supervising kind of what they're doing. Yeah. So how many years were you in the insurance industry? So my first job in high school was with the insurance industry. Um, and then I worked for a company for um, about four years and took a little bit of a hiatus. And then actually one of the reasons why I moved up here as well was because a friend of mine was opening her agency here in, the, in Frederick County. And I was with her for 13 years prior to opening my own business. Awesome. I love it. And I know, I know a lot of your story, however, <laughs> not going to imply anything. Um, so as you know, uh, I'm big on the word thrive. I mean, you had been with me since before, you know, I started C. Clark Consulting and uh, it came up with the tagline, you know, develop, emerge, thrive. So um, as many people are aware, the, um, podcast, you know, is all about thriving. And um, I just, I think it's really important that we all come together and help each other thrive. So what exactly does that word mean to you? So thriving for me um, really is, is kind of twofold. One, it's being able to support myself and my family while being able to do the things that are important to me, such as being at home with my children, not having to go into the office every day, not necessarily having to work conventional office hours, you know, um, being able to be here for the needs of my family and actually being able to put family first. That's part of it. The other part of it is um, I consider well, all of my strengths just about are in support. And um, I enjoy being able to be the person sort of behind the person, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy being in a position of helping somebody else to accomplish their dreams and goals. Um, and because that's what I enjoy doing, it, it fits, you know, it fits perfectly well for me to be in a position to sort of be behind the scenes and somebody else telling me, okay, th these are my goals and this is how I want to get there. And here's how you can help me do that. So I seek tremendous amounts of joy in seeing other people succeed. Awesome. I love that. So what obstacles have you overcome while trying to start your business and remind us what uh, month and year did you start your business in? Because I know it's still rather new. Yes. So this is my third anniversary. Um, I started November 1st of 2017. And as you said earlier, um, I pretty much started with you. Um, we uh, had the pl pleasure of meeting through a mutual friend. And 
like you said, prior to even C. Clark Consulting, um, we, I had done some very, very part-time work with you. And much to my blessing, you said to me, um, you don't seem happy with what you're doing. You don't seem like you're enjoying it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I thank God every day that you said that to me, because if it wasn't for you saying that to me and you giving me that sort of extra push of confidence that I needed, because that was my number one obstacle. I had no confidence in myself. Um, I know that I'm good at what I do. And I guess I just felt... I guess I didn't realize the difference between confidence and cockiness. And I felt like me showing an abundance of confidence in myself was off-putting. Um, but you showed me that I could be confident and I could be um, without any negative connotation to it, yeah. you know? Um, so, like I said, I thank God every day that you gave me that push because that was my biggest obstacle. I, I had no issues with starting a business. I had no issues with, I only had self-doubt. Do I have what it takes to run a business? Mm -hmm. And that was huge. Um, so doing some things and, you know, we've read a lot of books over the years and we've gone to a lot of self-improvement and help seminars and this, that, and the other. And I've learned to grow and to feed that confidence in myself without getting a big head, without, you know, feeling like I'm, I'm putting out an image that I don't want to put out. Yeah. So that, that for me was my biggest struggle. Okay. So you mentioned strengths earlier. So talk to me a little bit about your strengths and have you noticed anything like, I know, you know, you are very familiar with Carol and she talks about the dark side of our strengths. So have you noticed any obstacles that are around your strengths specifically? Yes. <laughs> um, so I am big on empathy. That's my number one strength. Um, and I'm an includer and I like everything to be fair and I like to be sure that everybody feels like they have a place to call home and I like everybody to feel like they are the only person in the world, um, especially when it comes to my business. So the downside for me is that I feel that as soon as an email pops up or as soon as a call comes in or as soon as anything happens, I have to take care of it straight away. So um, for me, sort of that time, that time management without taking away the feeling from somebody that they are number one. Um, I think for me personally, when I talk to somebody else's customer service or when I call a company, that's how I want to feel. I want to feel like I'm their only client. And that's exactly how I want my clients to feel. Um, so it's, it's been a challenge for me to overcome that sort of barrier um, and knowing my strengths and knowing the dark side, as you say, of each strength um, has really helped me to be able to do that and to um, sort of create um, boundaries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's so important because if you don't have boundaries, then everything's just kind of running amok and nothing ever gets done. Yeah. Absolutely. And you just feel like you're going in circles, which is not good for you right. or your clients. <laughs> so. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So talk to me about some of the resources other than the ones you've mentioned so far. So we've, you know, touched on strengths. You said, you know, that I helped you kind of get that push. Um, and, you know, you've mentioned personal development and things of that nature. So is there a particular resource that like really sticks out that was like, wow, that was like a turning point for me that really helped? Um, well, one of the, one of the um, self-improvement seminars that we went to, um, that's kind of, that was my turning point in where I had to actually set a goal. Setting goals has always been a really difficult thing for me. Um, what do they say? Um, if you write down on a piece of paper, everything that you hope to achieve in life, when you get to where you're going, you're going to have shortchanged yourself. Right. So I always wonder why well, I don't want to dream too big, but I don't want to dream too small. And what, how do I get to where I want to be? And, you know, again, and it probably all comes back to that self-doubt too. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So having to actually sit down and create a goal and say to myself, this is the time frame that I have to create what I what I'm trying to create. And then to achieve that goal was just leaps and bounds above anything I could ever imagine how it would feel. Um, so definitely that has helped. And then also being able to reach out in networking organizations has helped me a lot as well um, to become better with public speaking and to be more comfortable talking to other people. As I mentioned earlier with my strength, I like to make sure that everybody's included. So reaching out in, in networking organizations has allowed me to sort of do my part to help include people. You know, um, we all have different networks. We all have different spheres of influence. And um, it's really neat to be able to connect that with other people. Yeah. It's so interesting hearing you talk about like improving your communication and public speaking and stuff. For one, I mean, I know that we all can improve on things, but like, you're my like word guru. Like I come to you and I'm like, Don, I don't know how to say this. Like, help me, you know, come up with the words. So it's, it's just really interesting. And it goes to show that we all like have our own struggles and we all have that, you know, self-doubt and we all just are like, okay, I need to get better. And, yes. um, it's just, it's interesting because to hear you say that and then know that I lean on you so much for that. Um, it's just fascinating to me. So, <laughs> So yeah, I always look to improve. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just say I always look to improve. Um, especially there are people that I could literally sit and listen to talk, listen to them talk for days. Um, and that's how I strive to get better and more fluent and not stumble. And you know, so all of that that helps me. And being able to help other people is a big help as well. Yeah. I mean, when you're in like, I call it your sweet spot and you know, you're where, you know, you're supposed to be to me, it's like 10 times easier. You know, it, it doesn't feel like work. Right. It doesn't feel like, you know, a ton of effort and it just feels good. Agreed. So talk to me a little bit about how you are impacting other people. So you've talked a lot about inclusion and things of that nature and how, you know, you're able to bring people together and you support them with achieving their goals. Um, but let's dig a little deeper into impact and what that word legacy means to you. Oh, okay. So that's another one that has a couple of parts to it. Um, as I mentioned before, I do have children. So it's very important for me to show them that your dreams are achievable. And if you put your mind to it and you put hard work into it, that you can absolutely accomplish anything that you want. Um, obviously, we're in the midst of the pandemic and my children are schooling from home right now. Um, so they're actually kind of getting to see firsthand some days, you know, you may put in five, six hours, other days you may put in 18 hours. Um, and it's all for, you know, when they come to me and they say, why do you, it's nine o'clock at night, why are you still working? And I have to say, because I, I gave my word. I said I would finish something and I have a deadline and I gave my word. So that's part of the legacy that I'm handing down to them. Um, and I think that's so important for accountability purposes, for self-confidence purposes, um, you know, when you, when you can show them that anything is possible and they can achieve anything that they want to achieve. So that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. And then as far as, you know, business is concerned or me personally, uh, I enjoy working with businesses that are out in the community. And I feel that being in the community is just another sort of legacy to leave where you're affecting more lives than you even realize, because I could be dealing with company A and company B, but those companies are dealing with, you know, this charity and this nonprofit and there, and people don't even know that my hands have touched something that has to do with what they're working with, Absolutely. you know? So that to me is a huge part of it as well, is really just kind of sprinkling that touch throughout the community. Yeah, 
I love that. Love it. Love it. I can't help but to think of the word amplify and like that ripple effect, you know, that keeps going. So I love it. Yes. So you have, what should we say? Your footing with business since you've been in business for three years. So what are some nuggets that you would give someone who might feel like they're struggling in business or who might even just have an idea that they're scared to run with? So I would say do something because you can't move forward unless you're moving, period. So start with a small goal, achieve that, that will help to boost your confidence and that'll help get the momentum going so that you can move on to bigger and bigger things. Mm -hmm. And my second piece of sort of nugget would be, don't be afraid to use your network. Um, if it wasn't for my network, I wouldn't be in business today. Not only would I not be in business, but I wouldn't be thriving in my business. Um, and you, you have to ask for help. Not one of us was put on this earth to, to do it alone. And surround yourself with the people that you want to be like. And surround yourself with the people who complement who you are and who you complement who they are. And I think truly that's just the biggest thing. Um, that What is it? You're the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with the most. And mm -hmm. I never used to believe that. But now I'm absolutely a firm believer of that. Yeah. Because it's true. Yeah. It's amazing. I, uh, I forget who I was talking to yesterday, but um, we were just talking about how all of us, I think it was related to holistic women and how all of us have really progressed. And it's like, wow, you know, we were just having these conversations like a year ago about what we wanted to see. And we have really all leaned in and, and leaned on one another and we're all doing well, you know, so yes. it's just, like you said, you know, you have to surround yourself with the people you want to be like and just keep moving forward. So I love yes. that. I love it. So is there anything else that has come to mind that you didn't mention that you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, other than just, you know, to, to coin a popular phrase and to steal from Nike, just do it. You know, um, it's, I think it's just really important, no matter how small of a step you take, it's important that you take a step mm -hmm. because you're not going to get anywhere unless you start um, with something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I used to think for a very long time that I, I didn't want to be a business owner. I didn't want to, I wanted I to work for the man. I didn't want to be the man, right? I remember. <laughs> um, so but it's a game changer. It's a life changer. And it doesn't have to be, if you don't want it to be, you don't have to run a billion dollar organization. You know, mm -hmm. you can start where you are ready to start and you can be wherever you need to be. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be on such a big grandiose scale, you know, so it's okay to start small. Yeah. It is. And it's okay to stay small if that's what yes. you desire. Yeah. Even though I'm in marketing, I don't agree with staying small, <laughs> but <laughs> it is okay. <laughs> no, it's Growing is not for everyone and it comes with its own set of pains as we know. <laughs> Right. So, yeah, well, I, I'm, I mean, I tell you all the time, I'm so grateful for the relationship that we've had and that we've been, you know, able to maintain. And I'm glad, you know, that we crossed paths. And I mean, you're a very important part of my life. So I definitely appreciate you on a personal and professional level. Likewise, very much so. Definitely. Well, thank you again for taking the time and allowing me to interview you. And I'd also like to thank our music sponsor, Stephen Lamar Moore, who created the music for our podcast. So thank you again, my dear. And I look forward to seeing you continuing to thrive and making an impact in our community and beyond. Thank you so much. You're welcome.